The PHD Virtual Backup Exporter is a separate Windows application that enables you to export your backup data for long-term or off-site storage, for example, tape. In this video, I'll demonstrate the PHD Virtual Backup Exporter, including how to install and configure the application, and how to export backups on a scheduled basis. I'll begin by installing the exporter to a Windows server that has access to my backup data. The exporter installation program is included with the PHD Virtual Backup install package, which I've downloaded and extracted to my desktop here. To begin, I'll double-click the installation executable. I'll accept the license agreement, select the location to install the exporter, then begin the installation. When complete, a start menu and desktop icon are created. Before I open the PHD exporter console, I'm going to create a folder to store my exported data. I'll create a folder called Exported Backups on my C drive. This is the staging location that will point to when configuring the console in the next few steps. Now I'll open the exporter console by double clicking the desktop icon. When the console opens, I'll click Configuration. Here I can set the staging location and define the backup storage locations that I'm going to use when exporting my data. On the General tab, I'll enter the location I just created, giving it a descriptive name and entering the path to the folder. If any credentials are required, I would also enter those here. I'll click Save, then click the Backup Data Stores tab. Here I can enter the backup storage location I'm going to use to export my backup data from. Before adding a data store though, since my backups are stored on a PHD VBA's attached virtual disk, I need to make sure I've enabled access to that disk using the PHD console. If I open the PHD console, I can see in the configuration area on the connectors tab, I've enabled access and entered a password. Also, I'll note the path to the enabled share as I'm going to need that when I add the store in the exporter console. If I was using a SIFS or NFS share to store my backups, there's no need to enable that share. I would just enter the path to the backups directly. Back in the exporter console, I'll click Add. I'll give the store a name, enter the path to my share, then click OK, then Save. Additional backup stores can be added here if needed. Note that if you're using an NFS share to export from or to, some additional configuration is required for Windows. Refer to the documentation for details. Next, I'll fill in the info on the Email tab. Now when my export job's complete, I'll receive an email report with job status and the details of the job. I'll click Save once again, and then head over to the Jobs area. I'm going to create a job that exports three backups daily. I'll click Create to open the Create Job wizard. I'll select the backup data store I added earlier, then click Next. Here I can see all of the backups available on the store I selected in the previous step. I'll select these VMs, then click Next again. Here I'll give the job a name and then continue. At this step, I can decide to either add the job to the Windows Task Scheduler, or just create the job and use another program or batch file to run the job. I'm going to use the Windows Task Scheduler to run this job, so I'll leave this checkbox selected. When I click Save, the job is displayed in the Jobs list. Now I'm going to set the schedule for this job using the Task Scheduler. I'll open it using the Toolbar button. The Task Scheduler interface differs between versions of Windows. I'm using Windows Server 2008 R2 here, so to view my job, I'll click the Task Scheduler library. Next, I'll double-click the job to open the Task Properties. I'll make sure Run Whether User is Logged On or Not is selected, and also select Configure for Windows 7 or Windows 2008 R2. I'll next click the Triggers tab to set the job schedule. I'll click New, then create a daily schedule for my job. When I close the properties window, I can see the job schedule displayed in the task scheduler. Rather than wait for the daily job to run tonight, I'll kick this job off now to take a look at the exported data. I'll right click the task, then select run. The status is updated to running. Now we can check out the staging directory. Here I can see the new folders that have been created. 
Within each folder, I can see the VMDK files, OVF, and a text file that contains additional information about the VM that was backed up. Now the data is ready to be swept to tape or for other archive purposes. That completes the steps for using the PHD Virtual Backup Exporter. Thanks for watching. For additional information about PHD Virtual Backup, visit the PHD Virtual website at www.phdvirtual.com.